If you recall before, when we were disassembling the engine, we started talking about areas of the cylinder head and valve train area to look at, to inspect. If we look at this one, we can see around the edges, the metal is actually chipped and broken. If this condition were much worse, the valve would have to be replaced. Fortunately, this one can just be reground with the proper equipment. And if the rest of the valve is in adequate condition, can be reused. Now we'll move down and take a look at another valve stem. This one is in much better condition. We don't see any chipping of the edges, no cracking, and, but once again, we will resurface the top of this one to make sure it's in new condition before we reassemble the engine. Now, let's take a look at the rocker arm studs. We want to check for overall condition. First, we're going to look at the threads. The thread should be in good condition. And if they're not, we have an option. We might be able to just chase the threads with a proper threading die. Or if that doesn't prove to be successful, the stud must be replaced. Also an area of concern is the shoulder area of the stud. If we look at this stud, we see we have a deep groove in it. This groove is a result of an out of true rocker arm rubbing against the side and wearing into the stud. This groove is deep enough that it will weaken the stud and in future use it may break unless it's replaced. We've removed the valve springs from this cylinder head so that we can show you the location and the differences between the three seals available to us. First, we'll take a look in this area. This is our valve stem and this is the top of our valve guide. We're first going to show you the factory O-ring type seal, which is located here in the lower groove on the valve stem and seals the stem to the spring retainer. This keeps oil from running off the inside of the retainer, down the stem and into the guide. This seal moves with the valve and the retainer. Our second type of seal is the umbrella seal. This acts similarly to the O-ring except it's installed underneath the retainer and as oil tries to run down through the retainer it acts like an umbrella and the oil runs off it and away from the top of the guide shielding the guide from oil. This seal also moves with the valve. Finally, let's look at the positive valve seal. This seal fits snugly onto the top of the valve guide and also snugly against the valve stem therefore sealing the valve stem and the guide from oil. Also notice that the seal stays affixed to the head and does not move with the valve as the other two did. Instead, the valve moves through the seal. The reason that this seal must be used when using a high volume oil pump is because with a high volume pump, the level of oil under the valve cover can rise to a point higher than the top of the valve guide. If this occurs, oil will be drawn between the valve stem and the guide and be burned inside the engine. The positive valve seal is the only way to ensure that this does not happen. A few final words before sending the cylinder heads to the machine shop. Always remember to remove all excess gasket material off the cylinder head or any dirt, carbon, sludge inside and outside of the head. This way we'll get a cleaner head from the boiling tank. We have five basic recommendations for an engine of this nature. One would be to replace all intake and exhaust valves. Two, have the machine shop install positive type valve seals. Three, are your screw in studs and guide plates. Four, is to instruct them you want a three angle valve job. Five, when you order your camshaft, order a camshaft kit. In the kit, they will include a new set of valve springs. These springs will be matched to the profile of your cam and ensure you that you have adequate springs for that camshaft. Taking a look at our three angle valve job, first we're going to notice this red area. That's the actual valve seat. We've highlighted it with red dye to make it easier to see. Below and above the actual seat area, 
are two other angles. This lower angle was done with a 70 degree cutter. The top angle was done with a 30 degree cutter. And on this particular engine, the valve seat itself is cut at 45 degrees. All three angles are necessary for even a factory stock valve job to be complete. Because by using these two top and bottom angles, we control not only the positioning of the valve seat in relationship to the valve face, but also the actual width of the seat. Now, let's check the relationship of the seat to the valve face. This is fairly easily done by taking your valve and a magic marker. We're going to use red because it shows up nicely. And we coat the valve with a nice even coat of red ink. Allowing it to dry for a few seconds. Now we're going to take the valve. This is the intake valve. And we will put it in the head. And by drawing it up against the seat and holding light tension and spinning the valve, we will get a transfer of the ink to the seat and remove that amount of ink from the valve face. Okay, in fact, the camera. And this is what it looks like. As you can see, this area here where the die has been removed is the actual location and width of the valve seat on the valve. Noting that it's fairly well centered in the face of the valve, leaving an area between the face of the valve and the edge of the valve, and from the edge of the seat to the back face of the valve. Also take notice that the seat width on the intake valve is about two-thirds to one-half the width of the seated area on the exhaust valve. This is typical of most engines.